get them and a start if you guys want to condense to the front. Usually I have more people for treating. Okay. I'm going to be doing like half of the presentation from on top of a ladder. So, um, sorry for the angle at which you're seeing my face. But, I'm excited. Um, Christmas is coming, whether we like it or not. Um, and it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's the most glittery time of the year. Um, and it's the time where you can have the most fun in your own house. Um, I have people ask me all of the time, like, how do we keep our Christmas decorations matching our regular everyday decor? And I don't think you have to. I think Christmas is the time where you can really, like, get crazy and have fun. And if you're not someone who normally has a ton of color in your house or, you know what I mean, like, doesn't go over the top, I think Christmas is a fun time. Um, no one's, like, coming over and thinking, oh, my gosh, she's done too much at Christmas. They're like, this is so fun and cute and <laughs> happy and joyful and fun. So, we're going to start with Tree Topper. Um, everyone uh, always asks about Tree Toppers. Everyone asks how many stems, how do you layer it? So, we are really going to kind of dive deep. I'm going to do almost a full Tree Topper. I will say, you might want to move closer to the middle just because I'm going to focus mainly on this front part just for timing sake because it does take a second okay um so if you see any thank you if you see anything that looks a little uneven from the sides just ignore it because it will get fixed okay um anyway so we are doing a little tree top where we're staying like pretty red traditional kind of casual take this with a grain of salt, we can always change out the greenery, the belt, you know what I mean? You can change out different elements to make it more formal, more colorful, like a little bit different. Um, just for the sake of showing you guys how to layer everything together um, is why we chose what we did for this presentation, okay? So every time you do a tree topper, you're going to start with a tall green of some sort, okay? Like an extension of the tree. So what this does is it gives a little bit of fullness to the top of the tree and it starts creating a base that holds the rest of the stems in the tree when you start layering them out to make it that big, beautiful topper. Does that make sense? So you take your stem, it comes in a box all crunched up like this. We obviously don't want that. If you've been to any of my presentations, we fluff literally everything. So you just take every little branch and you go out and forward, okay? A lot of people try to fluff it like a tree, like all angles. You don't want that. You want it all out and forward. Does that make sense? So that is where you're going to start. Take the bottom of the stem and go against the trunk of the tree. And kind of at that, at the top of the trunk where you get your last little stem that faces straight up is where you kind of want the bottom of the greenery, the bulk of the greenery to be. Does that make sense? You guys make sense. <laughs> Great. Okay. Again, we're fluffing forward and out. Forward and out, forward and out, yes. And we just kind of want to go around in a circle. Now this is an eight foot tree, I think. So we are going to do about five to begin with. And with a smaller tree like this, we have less um, bulk up at the top. So you kind of have to like intertwine it with the tree branches sometimes to get it to stick. When you have your bigger, fuller, like 12 foot trees, 10 foot trees, it's usually a little bit easier. Um, but again, I'm doing the whole presentation from a ladder and I'm a little uh -huh. bit more uncomfy on the 12 foot ladder. So we're doing it this way. Okay. Again, out and forward. And I'm going around the other way. And I'm going down the trunk. Okay. I'm going to 
start with five. So we're going to do two more. Just kind of got to use your eyeballs to see where like the empty spots are. We do a lot of up and down on ladders, so I recommend grab a friend. Yeah, <laughs> stand down below and say, hey, he's got a gap right here. Right. <laughs> friend, husband, kid, grandkid, whoever. And you can always go back and kind of fluff, do, 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 rearrange. Okay? If anyone has any questions, go for it. Or switch. Y'all will notice she doesn't use any wires or anything. So yeah, these nice. first few stems are going to be important. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you got enough in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you shouldn't need wires or anything in a topper every once in a while for like a, if you have a really slim tree, every once in a while I've had to use a wire, but very rarely. If you do it right, it should be, should be good. Okay. Now, you're going to go in with, again, something bigger and fuller, but a different texture. So we did a green. Now I'm switching to a berry. That's typically my little formula. A green, a berry, and then we get to go in with like the fun novelty fill-in um, things that make your tree themed, if that makes sense. So right now, I'm going to go in with this berry, and again, I'm fluffing <laughs> out and forward. Okay? Out and forward, not in the round. And you're just going to... And again, you can like intertwine it, intersperse out and forward around the root ball. Disperse it, get the green out. Out and forward. And again, this is where you're kind of either guessing for the first part of it or you're using that pen to help you. Mm -hmm. um, either climbing up and down that many times or helps if you don't want to go to the gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just have some dogs. Yeah, there you go. They're usually yeah, the best help. help. And then also, sometimes when you're sticking your little branches in, we stick it and then it goes out the back mm -hmm. of the tree. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've all had that experience before. Um, that's why when I say you have to go, this is the tree trunk, you're sticking it down against the tree trunk as good as possible, especially for these first like longer branches. You really want to get them like stuck in around the tree trunk and again that's going to like hold everything together um so that we have a really sturdy tree topper okay and then i usually after i get them all kind of around i'll stick another one of our big full pieces one of the big texture ones kind of like right in the middle with the with the forward pieces coming forward if you have a tree that's going to be seen from all angles you're probably going to want to put like two or three in the very very top middle just to add a little layer does that make sense are we good <laughs> are we <laughs> even right now <laughs> <laughs> okay. all right so now we're going to go in with our novelty little bow 
has this cute little bell gem. <laughs> Super fun. Um, and again, we're going to fluff it forward. It's really, it's kind of a repetitive process. You just forward and out. Okay. And stick it down in there. And again, we just have to kind of disperse it. With these novelty ones, you want to make sure that like you can see the bulk of the novelty part. So I typically keep these a little bit lower, if that makes sense. And then I take and like just make sure that they're visible. We're fluffing, we're straightening, we go crazy. Is it important that your greetery needle match the tree? No. Um, to a certain extent. So, like, my big pet peeve is them being like a different color tone. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like a lot of the times they'll have like a blue spruce or you know what I mean? Something that's very like cool toned. And then if you put like a real huntery green, mm -hmm. you're like, what is going on? But no, as long as we're kind of in the same color family, um, it's really, I mean, it's not going to affect you much. The goal is to not see any green on the tree. The reason we put green up here is again to add fullness and start that mess of tangle that holds everything in place. So it doesn't necessarily have to match perfectly. I say like match the color family and then it's way more important that it goes with the rest of your decor than matching the tree exactly. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's kind of just filling your gaps so you don't really want it to stand out. Mm -hmm. If you choose bells, prepare for a lot of noise. <laughs> <laughs> it really gets jingly yeah. up in here when we're doing poppers. Well, again, the fluffing <laughs> out and forward. I'm just wondering how they're going in at the top. Yeah. So again, you just. I mean, the top of my tree doesn't look like they thought they would. I mean, you know, that when you're pushing them down. Mm -hmm. It will. It will. I okay. pinky promise. Okay. That's, again, <laughs> okay. that's why we start with the greenery and enough of it. You have right. to start with enough. I, a huge problem that I see people make is they'll put, they'll have a 10 foot tree, which is a big. See, I don't, I have a, I have a low ceiling. Okay. So yeah. I don't have that. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Is it wide? Like a no. normal width. No, I not. I normally have a live tree. Okay, oh, right. so it can vary. So, uh, it live can vary. trees, you know, yeah. Live trees, you will need wire. You will need all of the things. Uh, live trees what I are not yeah. forgiving. They move. They breathe. Yeah. They will they not hold your things thing. yeah. Yeah. the way that obviously a fake tree will. Um. So yeah, live tree. Good luck. I. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do a lot of live yeah. trees. Uh, you can tell. I, yeah. I don't decorate. Like, I, we go to clients' homes and decorate all season. So we have probably 20 houses that we go to that we decorate um, for the Christmas season, and we will not do live trees because they just don't hold. And well, you got to wait two or three days because right. you don't know what the day, tree's going to do. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Let it sit and breathe. Right. And then you have to get floral wire that is wrapped. Um, you can wrap it at home with floral tape, or you can get some, like, pre-wrapped wire okay. from the um, but yeah, that is going to be essential to hold everything together right. because okay. it doesn't, it's not as sturdy. My recommendation with tree hunting, find one that's got a sturdy top <laughs> base that you can work no, with. No, I did buy, quote, a fake tree last year and it was difficult for me. <laughs> I know. It was. Well, we it, also have yeah. Fraser Fur scent so you can put in the tree yeah. and that's like that. It was difficult. Yeah, decorated by that an artist is yeah, and it's fine. I do it now. But. It's just I have so many decorations in yeah. this little bitty fake tree. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oops. 
especially with ours. We use a lot yeah. in ours. Yeah. You can get away with using a lot mm -hmm. yeah, it, right? I know. in little trees. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'm retired now, so I can play a lot. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you got time for yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> And I will say, sometimes you gotta like, you know, don't do it so fast. You gotta really mm -hmm. shove her in there. Okay. That was good. That was really good. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Okay. So next, we are going to do, yeah, these cutie little white swirls. Probably five of them. Okay, these have a really long stem. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a super tall tree, you can literally trim these off. We are obviously not going to because I'm in my bedroom that has a big <laughs> Okay. And they won't show through the tree? Um, no. Again, we're sticking them. And they bend, so like stick them straight down. And if you want it to be more outward, like they literally will mm -hmm. bend however you need them to. Um, and your bows and ornaments can hide it. Mm. If it mm. does end up sticking a little bit or being able to see They it. will always stick out a little bit, but like, yeah, your bows and your ornaments should kind of. Okay. So when we're doing any element that isn't going to be like, we have a lot going on in this topper with the other, the greenery, the berries, the bells. So like that's going to look even-ish no matter what. Um, and we can always just stick more in. But when it's something like ornaments or like these that are in the topper, or I'm about to put a flower in the topper, um, you're gonna want to always do kind of a triangle shape. So we're gonna start one right here, and then we're gonna go one kind of in the top. I kind of want it to sit. I want it to sit up here, and then we're going to have one over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we use limbs all the time also. Mm -hmm. We just have to reduce a few of the stems. Yeah. Maybe instead of five, you do three right. of the big cups. Just a little more branches. Ooh. Yeah. Maybe more branches. <laughs> it is. Yeah. In a way. I mean, I forget the tree. <laughs> yeah, that is beautiful. Okay. Isn't that cute? So, like, triangle, mm -hmm. triangle. Does that make sense? We're making triangles this whole time. And then I'm probably going to put one back here. And as well. And then that's going to be a triangle. Okay, so again, triangles, and I wanted to add, when it comes to like colors and mixing colors and textures, I wanted to, one, add something glittery, because we have a lot of like flat matte things going on with the matte bells, the berries, and the greenery, so I wanted a little glitter, and then white, so like this really stands yeah. out, and it kind of still ties in with the little frosty on the berries and stuff, but it makes it a little bit more, you never want, and sometimes especially with like the lodgy trees or the more natural trees that we do, um, it's hard to make the toppers pop because you want to do like those dark moody colors. Um, so you got to either like with a bow or with just some little element in the topper, make it pop a little bit. So I think that just adds dimension. Okay. So I'm going to do one flower just for demonstration sake. Um, so we're going to use the other two in the mantle. Okay. Um, I love adding something a little bit more full at the bottom above the bow layer. So if you think about the topper as like three layers, we're going to have top layer, which is your actual topper. It's full and like coming out. And then we have to start kind of getting in a little bit towards the top of the tree. Or I guess getting lower is still the top of the tree. I don't know. Anyway, so then we're getting... We're going inward a little bit. It's almost like a waist, okay? So we're big, small, big. Mm -hmm. um, but near the waist is where you're going to put a flower or, you know, I love using a big poinsettia or a magnolia or like a really big hydrangea, a really pretty hydrangea is great in a tree. But we are going to use 
with like velvety magnolia because I really, I love, my favorite theme for Christmas is just a traditional like red and green. So I love these magnolia pink flowers. So good. Okay. So yeah, that kind of just is like, it's like a necklace or like a duck, you know what I mean? It's just a little bit of accessory. Okay. And then under the flower, let me go. The bow is the most important layer, in my opinion. <laughs> um, I love ribbon. Ribbon is key to making your tree, okay? I see so many people who have a huge bow for tree, and they put one bow at the top, and I'm like, what are you doing? Okay, <laughs> so if you have a 12-foot tree, you need five bows, okay? Five bows. And they need, I do every Christmas bow with two sets of loops typically for a wreath we do one set of loops per ribbon but for a tree again to take up more space and to just like accentuate <coughs> the separation between the tree and the topper you just gotta you gotta kind of go big okay and also if you have a taller tree if you only did one set of loops now it makes the bow look super small because it's up high. Mm. Really, yeah. really small and wimpy. Okay. Mm. But for a shorter tree, for an eight foot or seven foot, half your tails is great. I still am a two looper, two sets of loops kind of girl. Um, people argue with me. Customers, customers argue with me all the time. And I'm, I'll make it however you want. Don't tell them I did it though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're always going to put a tree bow on a little stick like this. These sticks are a little a little fragile, so you want to be careful. You don't want to manhandle this one as much as you can the stems, but you want to kind of stick it. The stick needs to go at the base of this topper, and you're sticking it like down the same direction as you are the topper. And you gotta get it in there, okay? And then you want to fluff. I see this all the time too. People stick it in there and then they're yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Okay. So you gotta go go back in there, fluff it. Okay. You want it really, really fluffy and pretty. Fluffy and pretty. Fluff the front one outward. Okay, so it's again taking up space and like accentuating that waist. Take your tail. I always fluff my tails by a kind of a little counterintuitive, but I put them all together and just like make sure they're really straight and kind of like ironed out a little. And then I take the back and pull it out middle and even if I have longer bows, it doesn't matter necessarily for the half yard, but if I have longer tails, I always like kind of crimp it, but not, I, I see this all the time too. Mm -hmm. Now, I like crimp it, but like more curl it. Think about curling your hair. So you want it like really pretty and curved, not like thinning. Nice smooth wave. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. For, again. If you have a really casual tree or you're doing these half yard tails, I'm perfectly fine with having them just cute and straight. Any questions? I'll up here. Looks good. Yeah, <laughs> really good. Okay. Um, again. So for a seven foot tree, we need five greeneries, okay? Like five greeneries at least. I use a pretty full greenery. Um, and honestly, I probably would add a couple more if I was doing this for without presentation sake. Um, and then I used five berries. Five berries. And then I think I used five of those as well. Five bells. I would use probably six or seven of the little squirrelies, and then I would probably use five of the magnolias, maybe four, around the bottom. Okay, so when you're doing your math, if you have a 10-foot tree, you want to go with at least seven. I would get extra just in case. 
Um, and then if you have a 12 foot tree, you want to go with at least one of everything. For my toppers are always really big above, out of the box above. So I, if I'm doing a 12 foot tree, I usually use like 12 to 15 of the base fillers, um, just again, to give it that big full effect. And I kind of, I love it when it is like wider than the bows. I don't like up, I like taller. In bows, we usually say go in odd numbers, just because if you were to choose two, You'd have them on either side. If you were to do four, you'd have a weird box with gaps. Five helps you smush them all. Three if it's a slim tree, so there's not any gaps. If you have a very slim tree, we will allow three. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I will argue with you. Your bows should be ideally touching each other. Yes. So if this is not a tree bow, but if it was, like you want it to be kind of like mushing it together a little bit. It's the necklace of your tree. Oh, okay. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. Like yeah. you want it to be okay. Um okay. So now we're gonna move on to how to place your ornaments. Um I always recommend so I love a family tree. I think it's really fun to use like hand down ornaments like things your kids, grandkids made. Totally fine. For the sake of this presentation we are pretending that you have none of those okay whatever you say we have none of those if that <laughs> <is> yeah <laughs> we're pretending that you don't have those okay <laughs> so those can be like a little accent on the at the end okay um or if you have a billion of them like do a cute family tree and then a pretty you know what i mean like a pretty nice traditional um themed tree okay that's what i will do when i do have kids in is one pretty one fun okay mm -hmm. i'm all about fun <coughs> um for the sake of this presentation we're going to talk about how to kind of make it look cohesive um i have a lot of people that buy one one of one ornament one of one ornament one of one ornament and then they are like why does my tree look a mess i'm like <coughs> well well no i know because <laughs> nothing is going you know what i mean like there's no theme going on which if that's what you like fine do whatever you want, it's your tree. But if you want it to look like our trees that are a theme, you know what I mean, cohesive, then we're going to pick probably between seven to 10, 12 different types of ornaments and we're just going to get multiples of them, okay? <laughs> so we pick like 12 ornaments-ish, again, depending on the size of the tree, the theme, what we find, um, probably 12 different ornaments. But again, if you have a 10 foot tree, you're going to want at least 10 of that same ornament. A seven foot tree, you're going to want at least seven of the same ornament, 12 foot, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's just your kind of math. We get people ask all the time, how many do I buy? And I say 12, and they say, I don't want to buy that many. I'm like, that, do what you want. But mm -hmm. if you want it to look, again, if you want it to look cohesive, that's the kind of formula, okay? A lot of the times I say there's no scientific reason. There really is. I don't know. <laughs> um, okay. So when we start our trees, we start with what we call a stuffer, okay? So that's typically, I'm using a smaller one because again, this is a smaller tree, but I have the ones that are almost like double this size that on our 12 foot trees, that's what we use. Um, but for the sake of this presentation and this tree, for the sake of this presentation, we are using I think this is like a these are four inch, four inch, five inch something. Okay, this medium well, they, sized ball. They call them millimeters. They call so them that's not helpful. <laughs> They're obviously not American. <laughs> so again, we are going in triangles. Okay, so we're gonna start, and with your stuffer balls, you want them close to the trunk. It's gonna be the same thing as your filler um, toppers. You're gonna want to. Put it in the tree, kind of as far as you can get it. If you need to, you can hook it on a branch, but you really usually don't have to. You just want, this is not like the star of your show, okay? This is hiding the branch. So we, again, like I said, we don't want to see the tree. 
Okay. We don't want it to, we don't want it not to creep. You're gonna tuck these in, and again, triangle, so I'm gonna go down here and kind of tuck her in. Okay. And the lower you get, the more you kind of have to hook them onto the branches. And I'm gonna. There, there. I'm gonna go over here. Tuck it close to the branch. And then triangle. You can't right now, but yeah, they provide will. like such a good just layer, okay? And then triangle. So we're gonna stick it down in here. You're gonna feel weird doing it. Everyone, Everyone has a habit of ornaments falls right on the edge of the tree. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think you promise this is gonna make all the difference, okay? Okay. And again, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna do all 12 sets of ornaments. We're gonna do two sets of ornaments, but just know triangle, you're gonna, and then your next ornament start in the middle, okay? Like you made that little tri two triangles for our next ornament. We're going to start in the middle of that whole vignette. And again, you want to get that kind of like tucked back in there. We're really, it's the same thing we're doing when we're doing a bookcase or, you know what I mean, top of your kitchen cabinets, you're layering. Okay. So you want to really, really layer. So again, we're going to create that triangle. So I would go down here, down here, and then tuck these up kind of under this bow. I'm going to do one up here to show you guys how we would create that triangle. And then I'm going to do on this other side, so we would tuck it down here. And then I always reserve the tips of my branches for like little small dainty or like a little, you know what I mean? Like something cute and fun. Um, but anything that's like big and has substance, we're kind of, we're tucking it in there, okay? To create that layer. And you're going to do that 12 times. <laughs> you know? Work with your bigger stuff and come out. That way you can see everything. Okay. And then... Sometimes we get all the ornaments on and we still see like some end branches of the tree that were like that needs something. Okay. To tie the top down with the bottom, you can take a couple of your topper pieces that you'd already used and layer it in again with just a couple things. Really Okay, so we're tucking, layering, okay, and then I always say slide it in against one of the branches, okay, and then you can kind of like You see how that kind of just adds another little texture to the tree? Does that make sense? So we're just adding another layer at the end. And we can even get crazy and tuck in that same flower on top of there. Does that make sense? Okay. So again, I'm not going to do the whole tree because I'm going to do it. You got the picture, okay? And doing that really helps your topper kind of blend to the rest yeah. of the tree, especially if you're feeling like yeah. you're not quite blended enough. Yeah. Add a few of those stems to the actual tree yeah. and it'll feel cohesive. Can I ask you about that triangle? Yeah. So the triangle is like here, here, but then you put one down. So is it more like a diamond? So yeah, well, a triangle and then like triangle. Okay. And then right. we're going to go one triangle. So one like, gotcha. you know how like, they're kind of interconnected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know right. how polka dots are arranged? So it's always like two, one, two, one, two, one. 
you're doing that around your whole tree, okay? Your whole, whole tree. And then that's where, too, like if you're using family ornaments at the end or you're using your littler, like dainty guys, once you do all the triangles and you've used all of your ornaments that you got, um, that's where you can kind of fill in different little spots, but you still kind of want to keep that triangle in mind. They just get like a little more spread out, a little more, you know what I mean, or even a little closer um, once you get to your last couple of daintier ornaments. And you always want to start big and then go to your smaller ornaments. So start with your big stuffer balls, start with your bigger, you know what I mean, any bigger element you have, ornament wise, topper wise, etc., is what you're going to start with. And then always do that triangle. Otherwise, it looks a little, a little like chaos. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> now we're moving on to mantle. So I love tying your mantle in with your tree, with your side tables, with your stairs if they're in the same room. You know what I mean? We don't have to do it exactly the same, but tie in some of the same elements. So in this tree. We were going to use more juniper, but I just didn't. So, like, tying in this juniper. So I picked this garland that has a little bit of juniper in it. And we have more little juniper sprays that we're going to add in. Um, so that's kind of how we're starting. If you're doing a mantle, sorry, that's crooked. If you're doing a mantle, I like to use two garlands, have them meet in the middle, and then drape down the sides. So for our sake, this is the middle of your mantle, and we're working outward down the side, okay? Obviously, you're, you probably have a little bit more on the sides if you have a regular size mantle, but this is how we're going to start for now. And then you see this side of the garland is like real, just, eh, it's garland, it's fine. It's a little wimpy, really needs to be fluffed, okay? Um, on this side, I've already kind of started to show you guys what we're going to work with. Um, but the first step of any, any time you're going to do garlands or trees, anything, is to fluff it, okay? So you're going to take all of your little branches and you're going to pull, I always do like one up, two out, one up, two out, one up, two out. If you're doing a mantle, you kind of want to face it forward. So instead of laying it like flat down, I'm going to go up and out this way. You have to have to kind of manhandle your garlands a little bit. Don't be scared. If a little piece comes off, you can just tuck it right back in. It's totally fine. Up and out. How far should you let it hang over the side? Is there a... I have a couple clients' houses where, like, it touches the floor, and I kind of let it puddle there. Like, I don't think... I let it go longer last year, and I just thought I liked it, and then it didn't. It didn't, grow, it. it didn't grow on me, no. Don't do it. This, it's <laughs> personal. Kind of preferences. Some people grow. only like a little. Would. Some mm -hmm. people like a lot. Whatever looks good on your mantle, because some people have mantles that are, like, don't have super simple, yeah. so they want something coming down to make yeah. a pop. Some have super yeah. intricate. They kind of want no, the mantle to show a little more. Of, I had that big piece of wood. Mm. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that big piece of like. Yep, mm -hmm. like the gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So looks a little better. Still mm -hmm. needs some help. Okay. So we're gonna start with another more specific. Oops. Yeah. In general area. Yeah. I have more of those. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, we're going to fluff this the same way we did when we put it in the tree up and out. Okay. And we're going to, so again, this is the center of the mantle right now. We're working outward and you're going to position your garland to where the greenery, the stems are going this way. And then on the other side, they're going that way. Okay. And we're going to stick all of our stems in the way that the greenery is going. I get that a lot too. People, especially with like a shorter stem, are like, dang, 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 dang. <laughs> crazy. Okay. It doesn't lay right. So to beef up this greenery, this garland, even if you have like a longer stem, like a more of a princess pine, 
um, with the like 10 inch little stems, you're still gonna wanna beef it up with a different type of greenery. You asked that question earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I like mixing in different types of greenery, especially with garland. It just makes it a little more textury and it's, I just like it better. So we are going to take and just kind of stick that in and you wanna do, usually I do three per side and then if you have a drape, I add another. And if it's a really long drape, we'll do two or three. You know what I mean? It needs to be just like a couple feet apart, 24 inches-ish. Use your judgment. Usually on a mantle, I do six little groupings like this. So work it in. You're taking your little stems from your original garland and like weaving them through, if that makes sense. like. If there's any, there's a pine cone here, so like I want that to show. I want this little magnolia and pine to show, so I'm going to weave that through. Okay, if that makes sense. Okay, so we've beefed up the greenery. Next, I'm going to take the bells that we used in the top. And again, I'm fluffing it like we did for the tree. Up and out. So, cute. <laughs> so we're going to literally the same place we just stuck the greenery in, we're going to stick in this bell. And again, so do you repeat the same pattern mm -hmm. all the way down? I do. I do. Again, <clears throat> the, the, the more you the more you kind of change it, the more chaotic it's going to look and less uniform. Mm -hmm. Like you want it to be uniform, but you just want to add these different textures to give it a little bit of depth. Does that make sense? So yeah, you want to keep it pretty, pretty much the same. And we're just repeating this process. Um, and then I'm going to take my flower. And again, I'm sticking it in almost the same place I stuck the rest of this. And you just got to manhandle it a little. And then I've got my leaves in the way, so I can't see my flower. So I'm going to move those around so I can see the flower. Okay. And then you can come in afterwards, and if there's a little, like there's a little spot right here. There's a little spot right here that I don't really like. It looks a little bit bare. So just take another little greenery. Who's being attention? <laughs> and then take it. Just literally fill that little space in. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then to add something different, we're taking a little ornament. So I said there's a spot there I didn't like and then there. So this one I use greenery. And I'm going to take this ornament and mix it in here. And I usually try to tuck the ornaments, especially if they're on a mantle, like around a branch a little bit. Just so we've got a little bit of stability going on. Okay. Yeah, that just adds like another little element. Super cute. Okay. So we've got it. Got it going on. We are going to do literally one more so I can show you how to do the end. Okay. So typically I said I would do three across the top. If it reaches your, if it reaches the edge of your mantle, you can use the third one to kind of drape over. But if not, um, do another one right at this corner. Okay. So you're going to want to. People have a really hard time with this. When I say manhandle your stems, like literally these things will bend, they'll do really anything you need them to do, okay? At your corner, I hope the camera can see this. At your corner, you are gonna bend your stem like this, okay? And you're literally just sliding it in how you would if you were putting it in the top, okay? You're gonna work it in like you are the rest of it. Bye bye. 
it just the same except for when we get to the end. Okay. We're bending it. We're just sliding it in. Obviously we're not leaving it with this. We're gonna control <laughs> little deal. Anytime you get a, a tree or a garland, I like when the branches can bend because then you can use it to kind of hold your ornaments where you want them to be or your stems if you have a stem that's going crazy. Mm -hmm. um, this tree in particular has these like more plasticky needles, but you can still bend this little branch like in half, which is very mm -hmm. important. I have a lot of people like the balsam fir trees that are like a million dollars for a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. They do not bend. They don't hold ornaments. They don't like they're pretty to look at just by itself. But if you want to get crazy with your tree, not the tree to get. Does that make sense? Okay. So again, we're gonna pull this little front back up because I'm gonna pull. We've got all of our pretties. In the, in the middle of your mantle, I usually do a bow in the middle, and then I'll do a bow on each side. Again, it's entirely up to you. If you want to do something else in the middle, if you do a deer or a, you know what I mean, whatever you want to do, we can play with it. This is just my, if I'm, if I have to put together someone's mantle and they don't have, they don't bring me any ideas, this is what I like to do, okay? So, I like to put one in the middle. And you can, again, you can use these wires on these bows to, like, hold everything together. So if you have either, like, a shallow mantle or, you know, you're having trouble getting everything sticking, you can use these wires to kind of tie everything together. And then, again, you're going to put it on. You're going to fluff your bow. When I only have one set of loops, I like to kind of use the back ones and make it kind of flat and then use the front ones. To come forward and I always like do it opposite. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So like the burlap, the plaid, and then these front ones will come forward. And again, with the tail. That's in the middle. Super cute. Okay, so that's in the middle. And then on the other side. And again, if you're having trouble getting these things to stick together, you can use this bow to stick them together. And then you obviously don't want to cover up all of your pretties that you just worked really hard on. So I always take this side of the bow, the side ones, and like put them more towards the middle so that you can still see all of this pretty. metallics that's totally fine I would still pick like a greenery stem to use um, we do have one tree that is um, like the silver tinsel tree that we I think might still use a greenery one to be quite honest off the top um, but if you don't want to use a greenery at all again it's just like finding that that 
filler, that first filler that's really thick and is going to hold everything together. Um, so yeah. And then you just want to keep adding. We could even add more elements to it. I just didn't have any. But again, if you have any spots that are lacking, kind of have a bald spot right here. And just stick another, another little stem. I kind of have one right here. Fluff it. Just want to keep building it until it's like thick, <laughs> full, pretty, over the top, out of the box. It's Christmas, so crazy. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Keep a quiet group today. <laughs> we're, in, we're in awe. We're in awe. Brownie girl. I do have a few uh, things. One question we get asked a lot if you've got a topper or an angel or a star or something that you want to do at the top, you could easily add that to a chopper like that instead of doing all the way around. You could maybe do your greeneries all the way around and then leave a little gap for your angel and then stick around with everything else. Uh, bows. We usually do little bows throughout the tree if you want yeah. to do those instead of big ornaments. Super cute. If we do little one yarders, we do ones that are just a single loop. They add a nice thing, especially if you've got a ribbon that you really want to go through. You can do longer tails on your bows that you tuck up mm -hmm. in, or you kind of use them as a garland around a tree. You can also do a little mantle. I don't, so, I, so, I, I was going to say, in my, in my opinion, people still love to do it, and if you want to do it, that's totally fine. It can be really pretty. In my opinion, it's a little, like, outdated to do the ribbons, like, either all the way around really all the way around like using it as a garland is a little bit outdated to me um if you still love the garland idea with the ribbon i like it kind of coming down the tree better mm -hmm. um but i think like the <clears throat> the most updated and trend the even not even trendy but just more updated is to do the kind of like one yard loop bows yeah. and then you just like stick it just like in the tree as if it were an ornament it's same thing as doing an ornament it's just a little again a different texture adding those different textures and different elements is what's going to make your tree look professional and you know what i mean like like always you know what I mean? it's just we do different textures and different it's not just ornaments a lot of people are like but i do all black ornaments cool you can do it if you want <laughs> but that's why your tree doesn't look like ours you know what i mean so it's all personal preference um Yes. Yeah, we always get the little bells. We have some really cute, like little bronzy ones this year that are like hand forged. So cute. Um, yeah, we've got some got some really good different little textures this year going. But we've got some super cute like belts, like jingle bell belts or like rings. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Adorable. Judy has used them in one of the garlands going around the doorway over there. I am in love with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks so pretty, just yeah. kind of like looping through the garland. Amazing. She has them in the trees also, I think. So you can use a variety of I have one anything. Like from your neck, I have one like Rolls the Garage for your dog. We even like Judy did at a client's house last year, she did a tree of like, it was almost all picture frames. Like they literally took family photos and like put them throughout the tree. So it was like a lot of ornaments, again, like layered behind, but then like little family photos, like tucked, little and big. There were some like bigger, like, like eight eight back there that's got an actual like hanging wall picture. Mm -hmm. Really cute. Really? Yeah. When you put yeah. out all your Christmas. So we are working on it, girl. Yeah, mm -hmm. the lodge is almost completely done. We're hoping. Yeah, yeah, so that's going to be the one with the big moose in the fireplace. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Our ribbon room is now out. Oh, okay. We're going to finish on that. We're hoping by October we're going to have this all done. Mm -hmm. Second week of October will be Christmas. Right. So, yeah. So what, what is the October, the end of October, I would say, the decorating thing that you're doing? Oh, God. So, that was a fantastic question. Since you did Christmas, I'm just wondering. Yep. It might be. What Christmas? 
<laughs> we'll be more Why Christmas. It's going to be a generic me. one. I just can't remember exactly what it is. Like gallery of the Dam? Are you not doing one in November? Or November, not? yes. December, no. December, no. November yes. is the one so we're still not set on. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Any ideas? Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I, I got a lot of hours in good. this month. Like, I love them. Good. Good. I had to remember to go bigger. Everything yeah, yeah. has it's a small and it's like a deep. Bigger and more. And always, so when you come, again, we're going to have Christmas out in the next couple weeks. So when you come out, bring a photo of like your tree, your tree from last year, all of your stuff. And we would obviously be happy to help you pull some things that will judge your tree. Um, getting also something that I realize is that if you are starting from scratch and doing an entire tree like we do, it can be expensive. So totally on board to help just to get like a couple elements a year that are going to really make an impact and so like every year for the next what five ten five years you're gonna buy like three new elements so maybe this year we're doing a new topper okay which is like three sets of stems perfect like let's just focus on your topper this year Next year, we'll focus on stuffers and getting some bigger ornaments. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or focus on your bows this year, and then we'll go in for toppers or ornaments next year. So, and that's, an, again, you're going to have to, our themes change every year. Um, it has a lot to do with the trends, but also just, like, what's available at market, what I feel like is kind of our, our uh, quality, you know what I mean? So, like. I'm very, I'm very picky on what we bring into the store, so that really influences what themes we do. Um, so if you're going to do it kind of piece by piece, you got to just remember to do something that is a little maybe less trendy and more, you know, will work. So you can kind of, yeah. How far in advance do you have to book to get your nails done? Um, we still have a couple yeah. spots. Yeah, so we still have a few spots available now. Uh, we start doing jobs to book this in the next few weeks and then we'll just do them all the way until the second week of December is usually our cutoff. So we've got a few spots available for if you guys wanted to come out and do your houses, we'll do your mantles, we'll do your trees if you want us to. We've done a few porches and entryways. We've done a lot of stuff. We can do it for you guys. I'd, I'd love to do I'd love to be there at the Christmas fair with my daughter. Yeah, that would be super down. nice. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. she would love that. Totally. You get to they get to keep all the green and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a when you when you book a job with us, you're paying for the merchandise and then it's um, an hourly fee for the designers. If it's just like a if it's just a mantle, it'll be one designer. Um, we have people who we do like three Christmas trees, the banisters, right, the outside, right. the, you know yeah, what I mean. That would be like a two yeah. person job, but obviously it like cuts the time in half. So if anyone has any questions, we have flyers and information. And, you know, and do you come out with blueprint for stuff, or do you suggest? So we can do it both ways. If you have a strong preference on what you want, you can send us ideas. If you have no idea, we'll pull some stuff. We'll send you pictures. We'll talk with you about it before we even come out. That, that way you're aware of what's kind of happening. You feel like you've got what you want a little bit more. We can put stuff up for you. Super fun. Any other questions? Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.